everyone! I am here with Virginia Shit Shit Say. <laughs> it's okay, I don't know how to say your last name either. I know! <laughs> We're here today to talk about crazy things that have happened in our science lives to try and throw this stereotype of like, oh, the scientist in the lab wearing a white coat out the window. <laughs> Who better to talk about it? a marine biologist. <laughs> I did marine ecology, I worked in the tropics for a while, and then I got to the end of my PhD and was like, I want to help other people tell their science stories. So I was filming a video for a competition about my research, and I wanted a baby octopus. The way you get an octopus, you shouldn't do this, I had permits, and it was part of my experiment. You chop off tree branches, and then you haul them on your boat, and they come out of the sponges, they come oozing out of the sponges. We were really interested in getting a good look at this octopus, so we filled up a cup with water, me and my assistant, and we put it in, and we were like looking at it through the cup, it was beautiful, and then we were like, well, we should get a picture with it before we put it back. And so she put it on her little gloved hand, and there's octopus this selfie! Exactly, super cute picture of her with the octopus, and I was like, she has a picture of it with her on her hand, so I can't do that, so I'll put it on my forehead, logically. And <laughs> as she was taking the picture, I was like, wow, it is like really sticking to me really hard. Like, it's hurting me! But it had bitten me with its little tiny baby octopus beak, and it just like scratched oh. a little, and you could see this groove. And I felt bad. You have a lot of time on the boat, as sometimes. Anyway, there was a jellyfish floating by, and it was one you of didn't those- You cuddle a jellyfish to your face, did you? I <laughs> did. <laughs> Jellies, it's what you think of with a jellyfish, the white ones with the four circles in the middle. And so it has, you know, it's a dome shape and the tentacles hang down from the bottom. The top of the dome you can touch with your skin. Finding Nemo. Yeah, like that. yeah exactly. It was clearly dying and been kind of eaten away on the edges, which is why I thought I could cuddle it because there was none of those trailing tentacles. Because uh -huh. it was dying. Because it was dying. But it turns out it was flipped inside out. <gasps> the non tentacle part was the tentacle part. <laughs> so I was like, okay, everyone, ready? <gasps> I was on an island in yeah. Malaysia called Palau Parentian. I was hanging out with some people from my hostel and we go outside and the water is like glittering. And we all thought, that's so weird, what is going on? And we happened to be with a marine biologist. He was like, it's bioluminescent plankton. So this was at night. Yeah, and it was only happening sometimes. So we swam into the water and he was oh. explaining to us the whole science behind it about how it happens really rarely. And they normally don't bioluminesce unless they think they're gonna die <laughs> because it's like to send a warning out to the other plankton like ah there's something really scary happening <laughs> and so you just walk into the water and that movement really scares the plankton and like you know you move your hand through it and it leaves this little like sparkly trail like my space accounts <laughs> like, <laughs> you, like, the curse. so um fox jellies are deadly in the pacific and they can be like the size of your thumbnail but they can kill you in minutes their counterparts in the atlantic are not deadly they're the size of like a quarter i don't know what British uh, money, a, a euro, farthings, a 50p coin, I think that's a good <laughs> translation. So then they have these tentacles that trail out for like a foot or two, half a meter. Oh wow, so they're like that tiny and then all the tentacles. Long. And twice I got stung by box jellies. The pain is so intense and so unlike anything else I've known, and you don't even see what happened. So if you drop a hammer on your hand, you're like, I dropped a hammer on my hand that my brain did not know what was happening, but it tried to tell me what was happening anyway. So you know when you're walking into a room, you open the door, and there's this moment where the edge of the door passes your face? My brain said, you just walked into the point of the door. All this happened as I was like sputtering, and I like, I come out of the water and was like crying and sputtering and like calling for the boat to come over. But my brain was like, you walked into a door, and then I was like, no I didn't! <laughs> There's no doors in the ocean. Exactly. So when I was in my second year of my bachelor's degree, there were these little worms. They do external fertilization. Um, yeah, it's just like <laughs> sperm. <laughs> Eggs. <laughs> but how do you get these worms to like by making them think they're gonna die? We would poke the holes in the little cave that these worms made for themselves. So they thought that like something was trying to get them or eat them. So they were like, oh, I'm gonna die! <laughs> That's the story of how I like to worm. <laughs> <laughs> so while we're on the subject of sex, I originally contacted Florence and was like, I wanna do a video with you, you seem really fun. <laughs> And then I was like, Florence likes to talk about sex. And I was like, I can do that, I'm a scientist. And as it turns out, I'm a really hard <laughs> I did come prepared with a third story. Mm -hmm. I saw a whale penis once. <laughs> like, on a live whale as it was having sex. I was studying whales in Mexico, and there was this one bay where they would all come, and it was a mating area and a calfing area. 
With some things, like with birds or something, there's a very specific, like you're in this position and something hops on top, or like you're in the air and something hops on top. With whales, you're giant and you're slippery and it's wet. <laughs> and so there it's was- like humans. There was, oh my gosh. There was a lot of like rolling and positioning. Like humans. <laughs> <laughs> There was this moment in all the rolling when it was like silhouetted against the sky and so there was this whale belly and there was just this giant arch like this like crescent moon <laughs> it's just not a, a video of mine if it doesn't include an animal <laughs> i'm afraid we might have put people off science all our stories were look at all these times i was in danger i chose to put myself in all the situations sometimes a lot more than others <laughs> you don't have to cuddle things to your face <laughs> you don't have to swim through the reefy of mangrove forest but if you want to, science can be such an adventure and you can make it what you want it to be. Things are likely going to be just a full story in the end. On that lovely note, <laughs> I think the moral of this video is become a scientist. Don't die. Bye! <laughs>